Praise the Lord, brethren. You are most welcome to the morning devotion for Online Church of Uganda today. And leading you in today's devotion on the topic, Rest in Him, is Christian Chayonka. Our scripture reference is Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1 to 11, and I'm going to quickly read, and then we proceed. Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. For we also have heard the gospel preached to us, just as they did. But the message they heard was of no value to them, because those who heard did not combine it with faith. Now we who have believed enter that rest, just as God has said. So I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. And yet his work has been finished since the creation of the world. For somewhere he has spoken about the seventh day in these words. And on the seventh day, God rested from all his work. And again in the passage above, he says, they shall never enter my rest. It still remains that some will enter that rest, and those who formerly heard the gospel preached to them did not go in because of their disobedience. Therefore, God again set a certain day, calling it today, when a long time later he spoke through David, as was said before. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later about another day. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from his own work, just as God did from his. Let us, therefore, make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will fall by following their example of disobedience. Friends, the message that we are sharing today is about godly rest, and it is biblical in nature because God himself set this agenda going uh, in, at the beginning of the, the scriptures in Genesis chapter 2, verse 2, where after he had worked for six continuous days, creating different forms of things, he was happy with what he had done and he rested. He blessed the Sabbath and made it sacred. And we were all supposed to follow it as a day when we let go of everything and focus on God and God alone. Yes, I do realize that we've gone through very hard times in the recent past, especially the last two years with the COVID-19 pandemic. And I think that is what prompted the House of Bishops to uh, declare this year a year of reflecting on the theme, Hope Beyond Affliction. Friends, the message coming today is for us to know that we need to rest in Him. There is nothing we are going to run after, no complaint, no lamentation, is going to change things for us, is going to give us peace. The only way we are going to find peace is in God. And all because before the calamities that befell us came, we had heard the gospel. During the period of this calamity, thanks to technology, we have heard the word of God preached. So do we have any excuse for not believing? Some people have had excuses for not believing the word of God. And those are the people that he clearly says that he has declared on oath that because of his anger to the disobedience of some people, they shall never enter his rest. Friends, we are called to come to faith. And faith only comes by hearing the word, the word of God and confessing it with our lips that Jesus Christ is our Lord. And we make him our anchor. We make him the person that we depend on. And he tells us in Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. That come to me all you who are weary and heavy laden. And I will give you rest. So why do we sometimes forget about somebody who is giving us rest. We don't even have to pay for it. He's inviting us. He's inviting everybody. That is the only place where we can find rest. And I'm here this morning to encourage us that whatever you have gone through, whatever you are likely to go through by way of affliction, you will only find rest. You will only find comfort in Jesus Christ, our Savior, because that is the main purpose for which he came. 
to come and salvage us. It is calls for a spiritual discipline, a discipline of knowing that God is my first run to person, not to friends using the telephone, maybe it were texting, social media. But we know that God is a present help in trouble. He's the first person that we go to seek. He's the person that we go in the quiet of our pain, in the quiet of our agony, to go and find solutions to whatever challenges. Because he has said that he will never forsake us, he will never leave us. So those who disobey him definitely will never find that rest. And our God is a God of wrath. He gets angry because he came to salvage us by giving up his only son. But when we do not obey that, what else can he do? He will have to unleash his anger. The children of Israel spent 40 years in the wilderness because of disobedience. We are privileged today. At that their time, they did not have the word of God written. We are privileged today that we know the word of God. We've heard the gospels preached. Why should we harden our hearts? So, to be able to find rest in God, we are to listen to his word. We are to believe, have faith. And it has to be active faith. We must be intentional. We must seek him. We must trust him. We must obey him. We must study his word. We must apply what his word teaches us. Is somebody out there weary and is wondering what to do? You are not going to find help in friends. You are not going to find help in alcohol or drugs. You are not going to find help in any tranquilizer which will make you sleep. That is not the rest that God is talking about here. The rest that God is talking about is that rest where even in the midst of affliction, somebody should be able to see that you have this peace and they cannot describe where your peace comes from. God gives us peace. The chance is not yet over. It is still open to us and we need to embrace it. May we all learn to cast all our cares to God. May we always make it a habit to run to him first before we seek help anywhere. May we surrender our bodies and souls and spirit to God in every situation that comes our way. He has promised, and that is why he urges us in verse 11, that let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will fall by following their example of disobedience. Disobedience has very catastrophic consequences. And in Revelation chapter 21, when all is said and done, we shall find that rest with him where he will be our God, where there will be no more pain, where there will be no more mourning, where there will be no more sickness, but we shall rejoice with the angels in heavenly glory. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for giving us your only begotten Son, that through him we will find peace, through him we shall find rest. May we learn to always trust him and come to him and cast all our burdens to him. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we've prayed with thanksgiving. Amen.